Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 29, Part 3 Twilight felt at ease walking through the Everfree Forest. She was an alicorn. She had enough power to destroy the whole forest, and nothing in it could be a threat to her as long as she saw it coming. With Night here as well, Twilight didn't have a worry in the world. It had only taken a few minutes to explain that there would be no danger, no evil altars, and nothing objectionable to Starlight. Trying to leave Trixie behind took ten minutes before Night just gave up on the idea and brought her along as well. A book floated in front of her as she trotted along. Many years doing so around Canterlot had given her seventh sense for avoiding objects while reading. Or, well, it was a navigation spell, but she kept that little secret to herself. Twilight glanced over to the two other ponies with her. Starlet was cautious, but fine. She was powerful and she knew it, and she could use her magic to overcome almost anything. At being able to teleport almost as well as Twilight herself, and anything that she couldn't defeat, she could flee with no issue. Trixie on the other hoof was paranoid at every little sound, every motion of the trees a possible threat. Trixie was no coward, at least when she wasn't facing an Ursa. Her horn radiated a hint of power, and she was clearly keeping it ready, having her magic available at a moment's notice. She had it just below the level where it would start to glow. Twilight couldn't help but notice a few times that Knight used their eyes to observe Trixie. She seemed to have an appreciation of the more physical unicorn, clearly pulling her wagon all across Equestria had done something to her body that Knight appreciated. After consideration, Twilight found herself possibly agreeing with the assessment. Do you think that she would be capable of doing veiled casting? Knight asked with interest. Twilight almost missed a step. Shaking her head and extending her magical sense towards Trixie, she examined her ley lines. Trixie had weak Earth Pony ley lines, as well as the expected unicorn one, all connected to a powerful wellspring. She's a hybrid? Could you not tell by how developed your legs are? Knight asked. A quiet rumble from Nova added her approval. Twilight would really have to set some time aside to work on the Apply Cold Water to Nova spell soon. She did her best to ignore Nova. She must have put a lot of work into strengthening your unicorn ley line. She noticed her companions were looking at her again. Twilight wondered how long it would be before they tried to get her into a padded cell. Knight was laughing in her mind again. You are staring at them and haven't said anything for the past ten seconds. Twilight smiled. Uh, sorry, I was just thinking. She said aloud. Trixie pressed closer to Starlight. Twilight could see the concern and fear in her eyes. It hurt a little bit to see it, but she could understand it. Knight turned from them and started walking again. You can ogle your mini dreams later. Knight thought at her. She gestured with an elegant flick of her wing for them to follow. A low growl and the sound of rustling leaves caught Twilight's attention. She felt her ears twitch, rotating to locate the threat. Knight took full control of their body, her hooves taking a fiercer stance as she turned to face the sound, horn alight. Starlight's eyes widened for a second. A moment later, she lit her horn, teleporting herself and Trixie to the other side of Twilight. The glowing eyes of multiple Timberwolves crept into view. Twilight felt a spike of worry, even as Knight relaxed her body language. Three powerful kinetic bolts tore from Twilight's horn. Knight's aim was perfect. The low-powered siege spell slammed into the wolves, sending them flying. Their forms smashed through multiple trees as their bodies came to pieces with the forces imparted upon them. Twilight could feel Knight's grin. This was all just a game to her. The dust cleared to a large swath of destruction and a few scattered remains of the Timberwolves. Good reflexes, Starlights. Knight praised the unicorn, looking over her shoulder. Trixie lifted a hoof and pointed. Knight followed the hoof to see the broken fragments of the Timberwolves as well as the fragments of the trees from the destruction that she caused drag themselves across the ground. They resembled in a one creature. A huge Timberwolf Alpha was coming to play. Knight clapped their hooves together in glee. Ooh, perhaps you might prove to be a challenge. Would you at least try to pretend to be me? Twilight's mental voice practically shouted at Knight. Are we sure we want to be in this forest with that crazy mare? Trixie whispered again. We can't just leave her on our own, not in this state. Starlet returned the whisper. Oh, can't a mare go monster hunting anymore? Knight thought loudly. Well, I have books. Twilight commented with pride. It's made from wood. We can turn it into a book. Knight playfully insisted. Knight was too slow to stop the Earth Pony's strength-enhanced face hoof that Twilight delivered to herself. Ouch! Knight mentally exclaimed. The Timberwolf roared. Knight glared at the wolf and bellowed back in the full Royal Canterlot voice. You stay out of this! The wolf was knocked back several body lengths. The book! With a ringing in her ears, Twilight couldn't tell if it was Starlight or Trixie that said that, but she agreed. Now do you know a spell that turns that thing into a book, or do I get to do the things the old-fashioned way? Why would I have a spell to turn a creature into a book? Well, at one point, you preferred books over ponies, so it could have been an elegant solution. Twilight felt Starlight's magic surge. A moment later, and she was somewhere else. Ah, oh, we're safe! Trixie exclaimed, now hugging Starlight. Twilight! Starlight started in a calm tone. What was all that about? Knight focused on Starlight, and Twilight kept her jaw closed. Knight taking the hints only ran it at her. Do you know how hard it is to find a sparring partner as an alicorn? I was hoping for at least a small challenge there, but no. Some pony had to teleport us away instead of just watching the show. 
Twilight felt very much put on the spot, as Knight seemed to take a mental step back. A lot has changed ever since of what you saw and what you heard. I know I'm in denial, but I'm dealing with it in the only way I know how. A chance event like that would have been useful, and as an alicorn, if I don't find a way to get rid of my darker feelings, they might act on their own. After all, just look what happened to Luna some thousand years ago. Night added for Twilight. Trixie gulped. Starlight took a few steps towards Twilight. If you need anything, thank you. Twilight sighed. I think I'm just gonna be a little bit out of sorts until the individual that attacked me is either in Tartarus or Celestia's garden. Aren't you going to try and reform them? Starlight inquired, and Twilight growled. Nova's influence broke through before she could catch it as flames billowed from her mane. The pair of mares backed off from the wave of heat. Terror appeared on Trixie's face as Starlight started preparing spells. Knight grabbed her mental collar and dragged her from the body, dumping her back into the mental doorstep. Sorry. Knight said in a tone that was anything but as the flames died. Twilight just lay on the obsidian floor and the mindscape breathing heavily. Sorry. Knight said again in a much kinder tone. Trixie thinks it would be best if she went back to town now. Knight's attention fell to Twilight. Are you calm enough to grant that? Twilight lit her horn in the mindscape, reaching down into the reflection and enveloped Trixie in her magic. One flash of magenta light and the showmare was gone. An expression of fear crossed Starlight's face. She quickly cast a few scanning spells, looking more and more at ease with each one. Do you doubt my ability to teleport a single pony back to Ponyville from here? Knight spoke. Your ability, no, but I didn't see your horn light up. Twilight thought, pressing herself through the floor, once more moving the shirt body with Knight. As there was no objection or resistance, she figured it was alright. It's something I'm practicing called veil casting. Once I get a town, I might be able to teach you. Knight said. I see. I would like to learn that when you figure it out, but I'm still worried about you though, but... You at least seem to be able to get yourself under control. But if you ever need anything though, <laughs> thank you. So, about the time viewing spell? Twilight asked eagerly, and Starlight nodded. Knight grinned, picking up Starlight with her hooves and flying off. To the kitchen! Visions of Historical Confections Starlight was being carried in Twilight's hooves, as if she weighed nothing. It was hard not to feel like a toy being carried by the alicorn. She could feel the powerful muscles moving with each wing beat. And the whole time, not a single expression of effort crossed Twilight's face. She was grinning happily, darting playfully around in the air. Rounding a corner and tucking her wings, Starlight let them fall through a hole in the ceiling. As gravity took hold, Starlight could feel a small amount of panic build. A teleport spell came to mind. Only her trust for Twilight meant that she didn't cast it immediately. Suddenly, Twilight spread her wings. One powerful flap was all that was needed to arrest their fall. As thick dust scattered around the room, Twilight's rear hooves set down onto the broken tiled floor with a faint click. Slowly, the dust settled, revealing their surroundings. The ruined kitchen had most definitely seen better days. Starlight couldn't even imagine what it would have looked like in its prime. Currently, it was only barely identifiable as a kitchen. The large fireplaces and work surfaces were covered with debris from the ceiling, and overgrown with plants from the Everfree trying to reclaim the building with its wild nature. Some of the happiness faded from Twilight as she looked around. Starlight could feel the slump to her teacher's body as she carefully set her down on her own four hooves. Starlight couldn't figure out why the sight of the ruined kitchen caused her friends to fall in such a state of melancholy. Twilight walked over to a high shelf and looked mournfully at the remains of a shattered jar on the floor. With Aurora, she picked up the pieces, slowly fitting them together. Rotating what Starlight could see was now taking the form of a cookie jar. What is going on with you? Starlight wondered to herself. Is that a tear in Twilight's eye? With a flash of magenta magic, the cookie jar was whole once more. The hint of a smile played across Twilight's face as she started to place the jar atop the highest shelf. She paused, seeming to nod to herself, and teleported the jar away. Starlight took a single step towards Twilight, whose head snapped around, and for a moment, eyes with an alien intensity looked out from her friend's face. Twilight blinked in confusion. It seemed as if she had forgotten Starlight was there. Twilight? Starlight asked, careful not to take another step. Something in Starlight just knew that doing anything to startle the mare would end badly. The strange look in Twilight's eyes faded. Another blinked and it seemed Twilight had returned. Her friend, her teacher, smiled back at her. The feeling of danger receded, being replaced by the warmth of her friend's kind eyes. Yes? Are you ready? Twilight asked eagerly. Starlight nodded. She would have to be careful for now. She needed to find out what was wrong with Twilight. The elements of Harmony were keeping secrets ever since Twilight returned to Ponyville. She had no clue what it was. No one did. Something had happened while she was away. There were rumors of a falling out between Twilight and Celestia. Add to that how strange Twilight was acting today, plus the events from the temple. She was just doing her best not to think about it. Starlight knew that she needed to talk to some pony, but who? Princess Luna? Celestia? Spike? Uh, Equestria to Starlight? Twilight's soft voice asked. Starlight looked back at her mentor. 
Oh, uh, sorry, I got lost in there for a moment. Uh, the, the spell, right. How far did you want to look back? 1,124 years, four moons, and six days. Twilight said, tapping a hoof to her chin. Less than three hours. You want to look back how far? Starlight asked in disbelief. Not only at the moment of time, but how exact Twilight's target was. Twilight smiled. I just need you to cast the spell. I'll be providing most of the power. Still, that's a lot of magic. Are, are you sure you're up for that? Yes. Twilight stated confidently. Starlight looked a little unconvinced. We are not skipping any of the safeties. Of course not, too much good has happened to take that risk. Twilight concurred. Now please cast the spell. Why are we doing this again? Starlight asked. We're finding a recipe for some of Luna's favorite foods that have been lost to time. Twilight said. Starlight couldn't help but wonder what her friend almost said. So, definitely no torture, screaming, monsters, or things that will require Luna's help for the next month? Twilight advanced upon her, moving closer, a little too close for comfort, with a slight strange look in her eyes. This is just preparing for a celebration. The time that we're looking into will have nothing untowards to be seen. Twilight said. Pressing against her, she started massaging Starlight's back and shoulders. Now just take a deep breath and calm down. On one hoof, she had no idea where Twilight had gotten so good at massages. If she were at the spa, she would happily relax against Twilight. Given that they were in the middle of the castle of the two sisters deep in the Everfree, and Twilight seemed as stable as one of Pinkie Pie's Tower of Cakes, she was more guarded. Starlight nodded, still a little worried as she started to cast her spell. Twilight moved closer, still placing her hooves on Starlight's shoulders as she slowly lowered her horn to touch both of theirs together. Starlight felt small. Twilight was physically bigger than her, something that she never really noticed in everyday life. Now, she was looming over her. The knowledge of how physically strong she was almost made her tremble. The power radiating from Twilight's wellspring was more than enough to daze a lesser pony. Just concentrate on the spell. Twilight said, her tone soft and calming. Starlight could feel the fear fading. So what if Twilight was acting strange? She was still her friend. With the edge of worry retreated, that left Starlight feeling safe. She had nothing to worry about in this forest. Twilight was here to protect her. I can't imagine how on and off Starlight is with certain emotions when she's dealing with Twilight. It could be scary? Probably is. It could be relieving? Probably is. You could think of almost anything and she's probably felt it. Anyways, let's get on to our phenomenal donators. Top donators Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and only one thing. Zar630, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Library, Chris, Michael Dale Moore, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Cadge, Runeslife 9852, Madman Stan, Lizzie Perkett, Drake Love Dragon, Hunza Norman, Stephen Bingham, Lion God 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hud Zaza, Convair, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.